Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Engineering Today. Today we'll be discussing USA's Space Policy Directive, China's reusable spacecraft, and two more updates regarding NASA as their new lunar rocket performed a full-scale booster test on last Wednesday and something more related to their OG-01 satellite. Let's get into the details. On September 4th, Friday, the President of the United States, Donald Trump administration added another Space Policy Directive SPD, currently its fifth. Trump's first directive was about NASA sending humans back to the lunar surface. While other directives gave ideas about how to manage space traffic and streamlining regulations for space licenses, this fifth directive focuses on how to protect their spacecraft from cyber threats. To prevent cyber threats, this policy targets to encourage the government and space industries to come up with cybersecurity plans for their space vehicles and include encryption software or other tools in their vehicle design to protect its privacy. Administration officials mentioned that they are currently focused on cybersecurity in space as most of the space hardwares are coming from foreign adversaries. As per that, one official said, These threats are diverse and complex, and robust public-private cooperation to enhance the security and resilience of an infrastructure is key to our efforts. The officials did not share any specifics about the types of threats they are worried about. Rather, one official said, Suffice to say that they do occur and they occur with concerning regularity, such that this set of cybersecurity principles was important. Officials talked about a report that contained detailed information of China's military and security developments, including their growing space program and weapons like satellite jammers. Trump's latest directive policy, SPD-5, which is to refine the U.S. space agenda, gave some guidelines to combat against these cyber threats, recommending operators to use software encryption tools, use trusted supply chains for their spacecrafts, and also ensure the safety of their ground system and take initial steps against jamming and spoofing of satellites. Sometimes the jamming can be fairly crude. Other cases, some of the spoofing can be fairly sophisticated if somebody's trying to get on board, one official said. So there's a whole range of things that you need to look at kind of end to end. SPD-5 also noticed the role of the private sectors and recommended government agencies to work with commercial companies to further define best practices, establish cybersecurity, inform norms, and promote improved cybersecurity behaviors through the nation's industrial base for space systems, according to an SPD-5 fact sheet. Okay, that's all for SPD-5. Now let's see what news we have from China. China has successfully launched a reusable rocket on Friday, September 4th, and after spending two days in Earth's orbit, it safely landed on China's ground later, extolled an achievement important breakthrough, according to Xinhao News Agency. Shangfu Xiong Xian Hangshe Qi, CSSHQ, that China named its reusable rocket, was launched on the top of a two-stage Long March 2F orbital rocket from the Zhihuan Satellite Launch Center located in Inner Mongolia in northwest China. Following the schedule, the Chinese rocket was in orbit for two days and then returned to the launch center, Zhihuan, on September 6th, according to the media. The government news agency Xinhao has lighted some details about the secretive Chinese military program. Up until now, most of the reusable space planes and crew capsules are from America. Previously, U.S.'s unmanned reusable spacecraft X-37B has completed a number of missions. However, if all goes according to plan, CSSHQ will be China's first reusable spacecraft. China has expanded its development in the space program. In June, the country launched its Baidao satellite system and first solo mission to Mars in the month after that. Reusable rockets are originally designed to lower the cost of space travel Though, apart from the best outcome, it's important to note that reusability of spacecraft and its parts does not necessarily mean they offer cheap travel. China's Long March 2F was a non-reusable rocket used to launch CSSHQ into Earth's orbit. Including this mission, China has now launched 14 missions since 1999 and a crewed mission in 2003 using the same design. In 2019, China became the first nation to land a spacecraft on the dark side of the lunar surface. However, Chinese media failed to provide detailed information and landing photos of the spacecraft. More information about China's CSSHQ are yet to come. 
The successful flight marked the country's important breakthrough in reusable spacecraft research, Jinhao writes, and is expected to offer convenient and low-cost round-trip transport for the peaceful use of space. Now, let's share some updates related to NASA. NASA's new lunar rocket performed a full-scale booster test FSB, on Wednesday, September 2nd, before the agency's space launch system is ready to fly their astronauts. The test was for approximately two minutes and was broadcast live from Promontory, Utah at 3.05 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on NASA television. During that broadcast, NASA officials said scientists analyzed the test results to see how well it went as this test was to check the performance and manufacture quality of the booster rocket. NASA's footage showed the entire test where the rocket was placed on the ground horizontally. NASA officials started a countdown for the ignition. At T-0 seconds, the booster rocket had been seen shooting out orange flames against the gray landscape. According to the information, the booster should fire 3.6 million pounds of thrust after the ignition and remain active for 122 seconds, though the actual test results are yet to come. After the booster stopped its hot flames, black smoke came out from its end, hot steam raised from the landscape. The test will evaluate new materials and verify that all the ballistic requirements of the motor are met," said Nicholas Keiston, a ballistics engineer at SLS Booster Contractor Northrop Grumman, in a pre-recorded video message shown on NASA TV before the test. NASA also said scientists would gather information from this test, which will be used in the booster rocket builds for Space Launch System after NASA's Artemis III program. NASA's Artemis III is targeted to take place in 2024 with a goal to send a woman on the lunar surface, but the agency is now focused on developing its future rockets and spacecraft for upcoming missions. NASA and Northrop Grumman have completed testing for the boosters used for the first three Artemis missions of the agency's lunar program, NASA officials said, adding, FSB-1 builds upon prior tests of the rocket's five-segment solid booster rocket to evaluate improvements and new materials in the boosters for missions beyond Artemis III. Since 2009, Northrop Grumman has completed five test firings of the five-segment SLS. Due to the global pandemic situation, the booster firing test took place two months after NASA's first space launch system powered up a green run test in July. Human Spaceflight Program Director Kathy Luters said, after NASA increased the cost for SLS development, the current cost now stands at up to $9.1 billion. Well, in 2014, the estimated baseline cost for SLS was around $7 billion. Space Launch System's first mission is to send an uncrewed Orion spacecraft to the lunar orbit for a test mission to assure for a crewed mission in future. After that, another flight will send astronauts to the moon to prepare a human landing zone for upcoming year. Northrop Grumman will modify the SLS booster for Artemis IV mission, which will be the second flight after Artemis III to land astronauts on the lunar surface. In June 2020, the company won a NASA contract worth $49.5 million for six additional SLS launches beyond Artemis III. We have one more update regarding NASA, as their OG-01 satellite has made a safe launch recently. Let's take a quick look. NASA's OG-01 satellite finally makes its final landing in the Pacific Ocean. In 1964, NASA launched the OG-01 satellite into orbit to study the Earth's magnetosphere and how it reacts while orbiting around the Sun. Scientists gathered considerable data from the satellite, but in the early 70s it was retired. OG-01 was under NASA's Orbiting Geophysical Observatories project. OG-01 satellite broke by hitting Earth's atmosphere and landed on 160 kilometers southeast of Tahiti, Pacific Ocean. University of Arizona's Catalina Sky Survey CSS, and the University of Hawaii's Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System ATLAS, both predicted the impact of a spacecraft. Later, CSS researchers studied at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, also the European Space Agency's NEO Near Earth Object Coordination Center found out after their analysis that the spacecraft was actually the OG-01 satellite from the 60s. According to a NASA employee, Josh Handel said that the spacecraft crashed into the atmosphere about 25 minutes earlier than NASA had predicted. 
later shattered satellite landed on the South Pacific Ocean. Including OGO-1, now all five satellites from the 1960s have crashed into the Earth's atmosphere and landed on several sites in the South Pacific Ocean. That's all for today, my friends. We get a lot of requests asking for news which are not related to SpaceX, so we tried our best and we certainly hope you like it. We'll be back soon with more interesting news to keep you updated. Till then, stay safe and have fun. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.